Next, we're going to be talking about the Babylonian system of numeration. It is one of the earliest known systems of numeration that was actually written down. Now, the Babylonians wrote in clay tablets, and they did so by taking a stylus and just poking it into the clay to leave these marks right here. So because this was a tedious process and we needed to do this quickly, uh, they only actually had two different numerals. Okay, they had a numeral okay, that was like this, and this represented the number one. And then they also had a numeral that would, would have taken two strokes like this, and this represents the number 10. Now out of these, they were able to make all of their numbers. Now the rules of the Babylonian system each place value was actually a grouping of numerals. Place values then were separated by spaces. And we still have the same idea of multiplying each group by its place value. The Babylonian system of numeration is a base 60 system. There's many reasons of people speculating why they use 60. Uh, could have to do with degrees in an equilateral triangle. Could have to do with the fact that it divides very well by 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5. Um, it could have to do with your hands, how you have three uh, knuckles on each finger on one hand, making 3 times 4, 12. And then using your other five fingers, you could actually count to 60 using just your hands. Um, but whatever the reason, it is a base 60. So what that means for us is that way over here, anything on the right is going to be 60 to the 0 power, or your 1's column. And then if we're following the place value system of a base, so 60 to the 1st will be your next one. And so the next place is 60. So they figured they could count all the way up to 60, and then that would have to be a new grouping. Then we have 60 squared, which is 3,600. Then we would have 60 cubed, which is 216,000. And 60 to the fourth, which is 12 million 960,000. And this would continue, but it's unlikely that they would have needed anything uh, this big. So we're not actually going to record these. That's getting way too up there. So basically, what we want to do is rewrite these, uh, translate them into Hindu Arabic. And so we see this sort of space here, and we see a grouping here and a grouping here. So I just want to separate these spaces just like that. Okay, now this becomes sort of an additive system. So I see two symbols for 10 here, and so this really is 20. And here I see two symbols for 10 and four symbols for 1, so that's really 24. Now the way this works is anything furthest to the right is going to be worth 1 each. So this is really times 1 right here, so that's just 24. And then if we go one to the left, now they're worth 60 each. So here, this is going to be times 60. And 20 times 60 is 1,200. And then we basically want to add these together. So 1,200 plus 24 is 1,224. In our second example, we do see one more symbol here. And this symbol is going to mean subtraction. So we're able to do subtraction here. So this becomes 10 minus 2, which is 8. OK, so now in, in example 3, I see three groupings here separated by our spaces. OK, so this is worth 1. This right here is 11. This right here is going to be 20 minus 2. 20 minus 2 is 18. So this is worth 18. 
So what this means is we have 18 groups of 1, so it's just 18 times 1. We have 11 groups of 60, so that's going to be times 60. And then we have one group of 3,600. Okay, so this becomes 3,600 plus, okay, 11 times 60, and that's 660, and then 18 times 1, which is just 18, and then we want to add all these up. So we get 3,600 plus 660 plus 18. So we get the number 4,278. In our next number here, notice we have no spaces here. So this would be the number, let's see, three tens and five ones. So this is 35 minus 110 and two ones, so 12. And 35 minus 12 is 23. Now, Converting it to our system was actually a lot slower than just using their system. So in their system, if we were to subtract, we're subtracting one of these symbols away, so we can just get rid of it. And then we're subtracting two of these symbols away, so we'll just get rid of two of those. And so subtraction-wise, we're left with two of these symbols and three of these symbols, which is 23. So they had some advantages in terms of subtraction, definitely. Now here's a question for you. How many hours, minutes, and seconds are there in 9,820 seconds? Well, let's see. So if we have 9,820 seconds, we could divide this by 60 and figure out how many minutes there were. So 9820 divided by 60. So there's 163 minutes. Okay, plus a certain amount of seconds left. Okay, so if we want to figure out how many seconds were left, we would have to find the remainder here. So little long division reminder, go 163 times 60. And we get 9,780. So this number here needs to be within 60 of our original number. So now let's go ahead and subtract. So 9820 minus 9780 leaving us a remainder of 40. So this becomes 163 minutes and 40 seconds. Now the question said how many hours, minutes, and seconds? So what you want to do now is take those 163 minutes and divide that by 60 to find out how many hours we have right here. So 163 divided by 60 gives us a total of two whole hours. And now we can do two times 60, which is 120. And notice the difference here is gonna be less than 60, so this is 43. So this becomes two hours and 43 minutes. So all in all, we would have two hours, 43 minutes, and 40 seconds. So why does our system for time give you an advantage in learning the Babylonian system? Well, it's in the same base, the same base of 60. So once we have seconds here, if we get up to 60 seconds, it spills over and becomes a minute. Once we have 60 minutes, it spills over and becomes an hour. And so this system could be written in Babylonian as being two hours, 43 minutes and 40 seconds. In the following examples, we want to write the Hindu Arabic numerals as Babylonian numerals. 
You could follow the same process we just did with the time. Divide by 60, get the remainder. Divide that number by 60, get the remainder, and then write it all out. Or it would be easiest if we divided by the largest place value that would fit into the number. Then we would divide the remainder by the next smaller place value. And then keep repeating this until we actually divide by the place value of 1. And then your answer is going to be all the numerators in your division problems, or basically on top. So for this to work, we do need our place values. So let's just rewrite the place values of the Babylonian system here. It went 1, 60, and then 3,600. Now you can either memorize that, or you can just remember that it's a base 60 system. So 60 to the 0, 60 to the 1st, and then 60 squared. Okay, and We're not going to ever go higher than this. Okay, so the first thing said divide by the largest place value that fits into 1602. So does 3600 fit into 1602? No, it doesn't. So 60 is the largest one that fits. So you're just going to go 1602 divided by 60. Now I would suggest using a calculator for this. So 1602 divided by 60. And we get 26.7. So only record the whole number there, 26. And that 0.7 is going to be part of our remainder. So now perform the long division, 26 times 60. And it's 1560. and then subtract here. So just go 1602 minus 1560 and we get 42. Okay. Now this number is going to slide over the remainder Okay. so then divide the remainder by the next smaller place value. So what place value is smaller than 60? Well it's just going to be 1. So we're going to divide this by 1, and that just equals 42. And now your answer is going to be on top. Okay? It's going to be 26 and 42. So all we have to do is rewrite this now using our Babylonian symbols. So 26, leave a space, and 42. Okay? I want you to try this next one on your own and then come on back to check your work. All right, welcome back. So you should have divided your first number by 3600 because that's the largest base that will go into 6270. Then you should have gotten a 1 and your remainder was 2670. And notice the 2670 now becomes the inside number for your next division. And you divide by the next value of 60. Okay, and should have gotten 44 with a remainder of 30. And then 30 divided by 1, because that's your next place value there, should have gotten 30. So then writing out the number, you get 1, 44, and 30. All right, we're going to try this next one here. Uh, so we have the number 1200, and we're going to divide it by the largest place value that, that fits. So it looks like 60 is the largest one. And so let's do 1200 divided by 60. We get 20. Now notice it went in evenly. So this becomes 1200 here with a remainder of 0. So if we just followed our step, 0 divided by 1 is still 0. So we need to represent the number 20, like so, and then the number 0. So there's a problem, because there is no 0 
in the Babylonian system, and this creates a problem. Now, based on this number, they would know in context whether it was 20 or it was 1200, but other than that, there'd be no way to distinguish between the two numbers. So having a zero is really an important factor in any place value system. All right, so that's how to deal with the Babylonian system, translating it to and from Hindu-Arabic numerals.